Day 73 of the Atlantic Hurricane Season, day 91 in the Eastern Pacific. It's August the 12th and we currently have a few systems active at the moment. Uh, first of all, the most noteworthy, of course, is Typhoon Utor, which made landfall in the Philippines, in Luzon, in the northern Philippines, in the past few hours as a Category 4 typhoon with 140 mile per hour winds. Uh, quite a strong system, intense storm. Um, we currently have a few other systems as well. Uh, Henriette has finally degenerated into a remnant low in the uh, Pacific, just south of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, certainly a dis too much of a distance to affect those islands. Um, and we currently have some invests out there as well. 97W in the South China Sea, just south of Hainan now. Uh, 92E, which is currently located in the Eastern Pacific, in between um, the American continent and Hawaii. Looking into the Atlantic now, you can see not too much going on, but there, is a system, there was a system um, near the uh, Mexican coastline in the far western Gulf of Mexico, which had a low chance of development from the National Hurricane Center not too long ago. Uh, wasn't designated as an invest and has now been uh, retracted down to 0%. And uh, we also have Invest 90S, which is currently located in the Indian Ocean, around 90 degrees east, uh, which puts it just southwest of Indonesia and is not likely to develop over the next few days. But you never know what might happen um, in that region. But we are off-season pretty much in the South Indian Ocean for this time of year. Looking at the sea surface temperatures then, off the Mexican coastline, very warm waters here um, in the Pacific and in the Atlantic side, temperatures of around 30 degrees or more near the shores. Um, in the Gulf of Mexico, the whole northern half is around 30 degrees or more, which is certainly ripe for any storms that may find themselves in that region. As far as the western Pacific is concerned, the, concerned, the very warmest of the waters is in the, um, the uh, open waters to the east of Taiwan. Though in the South China Sea, where Uto is expected to go, waters are still very conductive for development, 28 degrees or so generally uh, where that is located in the northern part of the South China Sea. So this is Typhoon Utol, Philippine name Labuyo, currently with winds uh, dropping now as it's made landfall in uh, Luzon, estimated 130 miles per hour and a pressure of 940 millibars at the moment, 16.2 um, degrees north, 121.7 degrees east as of 12 a.m. on August the 12th and is expected to move towards the west-northwest, um, weakening to a category 2 storm as it moves over Luzon at the moment. Um, and then maintaining that intensity out in the South China Sea, possibly um, intensifying maybe to a Category 3 storm before striking China and then eventually dissipating. Signal 3 warnings are still in effect for pretty much the northern half of Luzon, um, so that means a very strong winds of um, hurricane force and of course even stronger than that in the landfall area in Aurora province, uh, winds could be at 140 miles per hour gusting to 160 or more Category 5 strength. Uh, signal 2 warnings in, in effect for parts of central Luzon and uh, signal 1 warnings further south as well um, in parts of central Luzon. The southern part of Luzon is now um, under no warnings. That was not the case not too long ago, but all warnings have been lifted for the uh, extreme southern parts of Luzon Island at the moment in the Philippines. So looking at the shear map there, this is the wind shear at the moment. It's quite low where the storm is headed, so certainly ripe for any intensification coupled with the um, sea surface temperatures. Now there is an area of increasing shear near the Chinese coast, not too far from Hainan as well. Um, so that may cause a little bit of um, weakening before the storm makes landfall there. And this is the um, water vapour imagery. You can see in the Western Pacific generally lots of moisture around. Um, certainly where the storm is located due to um, and certainly moisture ahead of it as well which will not inhibit any development because dry air is what does that and that's way off to the west um, towards the central Pacific there. This is the past 24 hours or so in satellite imagery. You can see the eye popped out from Utor there um, just as it approached the Philippines and that's when it peaked as a 150 mile per hour super typhoon weakening slightly before its landfall in the Philippines at 140 miles per hour but still rather intense, um, definitely intense and could cause um, quite a lot of uh, hazardous conditions over in the Philippines at the moment. And this is the uh, latest floater imagery. You can see quite the intense core of the storm moving ashore in the eastern Luzon and of course heavy rains over the whole of Luzon Island there um, pretty much would, could lead to flooding and mudslides especially over the mountainous regions that they have there. Uh, this is what's left of Henriette, quite a contrast, you can see hardly anything left of this storm at the moment, surrounded by some dry air, not too much moisture, which is certainly killing it off, um, what's left of it. It is declared post-tropical now, remnant low, as it moves towards the west to the south of the Hawaiian Islands, and is not likely to proceed much longer until it becomes unrecognisable. 
Um, and this is the current system in the uh, South Indian Ocean as well, Invest 90S, the first one of the uh, year. And um, not too much going on with it at the moment, uh, not too much organisation and indeed not too much chance of development over the next two days as it is off season as I said earlier down there, um, at least for a few months yet. So let's take a look at the latest model ones then, this is the CMC forecast first of all, having uh, Invest 92E moving off to the uh, Pacific, but it also has a new system forming in the Atlantic as well near the Yucatan Peninsula and moving into the Gulf of Mexico becoming what appears from the CMC as um, a fairly significant hurricane possibly bearing down on Texas. That's the CMC scenario. The ECMWF has a new storm forming in the eastern Pacific becoming at least a depression I'd say um, and a wave moving across the Atlantic at the moment um, but nothing in terms of any development in the Atlantic apart from another wave passing through the Cape Verde Islands that does not develop. The GFS model takes 92E out towards the west um, and also has that storm in the Gulf of Mexico that moves instead into Louisiana or Mississippi as a tropical storm, uh, making landfall there eventually. Um, looks like Alabama and Florida as well actually. Um, so that's certainly an interesting scenario that may play out as well. And the NAVGAM model also has a system moving through the uh, Yucatan Peninsula into the Gulf of Mexico. Not quite as clear but you can certainly see it moving through and um, possibly affecting or possibly um, troubling the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, Texas, Mexico, Louisiana, that area. The GFDM model uh, doesn't really predict much going on in the eastern Pacific. This one was for Henriette, but we obviously know what's going on with that one, but it doesn't predict any storms behind that in terms of 92E. The HWRF model does predict 92E to eventually form into uh, at least a weak tropical storm as it heads towards Hawaii, um, and it appears that it might cause a little bit of disruption up there, but nothing too serious. And this is the um, current static models you can see for the uh, current system, 92E. A few of the models take the um, storm through Hawaii, though um, intensities are unknown on that one. And some take it towards the south as well, following a similar line to uh, Henriette um, towards the south of Hawaii. But either way, it will not be any strong. It won't. It won't be a strong storm, and it probably won't affect the Hawaiian Islands too much. The CMC model then for the Western Pacific has the current storm at all moving into the Hong Kong region if I wasn't mistaken there um, and a new storm forming near Taiwan as well near the uh, Wikiu Islands in Japan and then curling round and making landfall in China as a rather intense typhoon as well. And the GFS model takes Utor into China, just east of the um, Hainan Island and just west of Macau um, as a typhoon which is pretty much what the official forecast state says at the moment as well and another system forming uh, to the northeast of Taiwan as well uh, both of the models agree on that one too looking at the overall predicted season scores then for August the 12th um, MH Raphael is in first place with 61 points in second place is William with also with 61 points and in third place is BFDIA submission 2 with 57 points at the moment you can submit your own storm totals at the website force13.com forward slash interactive dot html that's the main place for the interactive stuff um, and click the 2013 predict the season button and uh, get predicting because time is running out the year is progressing and the scores are decreasing the potential scores that you can get um, as time and accuracy uh, go on and accuracy decreases so what happened on this day then on August the 12th? In 1969, Hurricane Blanche turned post-tropical near Nova Scotia. In 1974, Tropical Storm Alma formed in the Central Atlantic, that one's pictured there. In 1978, Hurricane Cora dissipated near Aruba. In 1981, Tropical Storm Dennis degenerated into a tropical wave. And in 1985, Tropical Storm Danny formed near southern Cuba, uh, becoming a hurricane eventually. In 1992, Hurricane Javier dissipated in the eastern Pacific, that one's pictured at peak intensity there. In 2003, Tropical Storm Grillamo dissipated in the eastern Pacific as well. And in 2004, Tropical Storm Bonnie made landfall in Florida, resulting in four fatalities and $1.27 million in damages. Uh, there it is pictured making landfall in Florida um, as a tropical storm. Also that very same day, Charlie passed Jamaica as a Category 1 uh, hurricane, with, resulting in one fatality and $1 million of damages, that one's pictured there. In 2008, Hernan turned post-tropical in the eastern Pacific. In 2009, Tropical Storm Guillermo formed in the eastern Pacific as well, and in 2011, Tropical Storm Franklin formed in the North Atlantic. Um, that's two years ago today, on August the 12th. And don't forget you can visit the uh, website force13.com forward slash storm tracking dot html that's the main page for it uh, that's where you can track any storms that are currently active and indeed we do have storms active uh, not in the eastern pacific anymore but in the western pacific with your tour of course there'll be updates um, as and when I can fit them in 
around um, video updates as well so in between videos there might be a few updates showing where the storm's going so you may want to check that out especially if you um, are have a real interest in that region of the world um, I'll certainly be keeping up to date with the warnings that are currently going on down there as well um, so do check it out the website in between videos um, force13.com forward slash storm tracking and we have the tables at the top one which show the storm intensities and uh, current warnings and then you can go deeper basin by basin to see uh, what storms are active their tracking maps and um, any current warnings in effect in more detail and of course you can visit the uh, social pages as well youtube facebook and twitter force 13 is on all three of those just uh, search us you should find us fairly easily enough on whichever platform you're on there and um, please do show your support by doing the usual engagement procedures um, by liking subscribing commenting favoriting following or anything else that you may be able to think of that I could not at this time. Um, and we also have the discussion forum as well on the website force13.com just uh, press the forum button at the top right and um, discuss any storms out there if you wish. And it's also 105 days until Hurricane Week 2013 by Force13. Um, just visit the website force13.com forward slash, forward slash Hurricane Week 2013, hw2013.html for the main information on that. Uh, we are looking for contribution, so um, if you believe you may be able to contribute something towards the Hurricane Week, uh, please do check it out and um, send an email. The next bulletin will be coming up at around midnight UTC on the morning of Tuesday, August 13th, but that's all for now. There might be a bulletin, uh, another update for Typhoon Utor during the day tomorrow. <laughs>